In this video, we will review how to set up a settings file and a page label and attribute file. Begin by selecting the modality for the test you will be performing. For this example, we will select Auditory ABR. You will be asked if you would like to default to the standard settings for the selected EP. Select Yes. Next, return to the protocol menu. For Duet Platform and ABR testing specifically, we have added single channel mode for users who want to use a three electrode montage with internal electrode switching between the inverting and ground electrodes. Therefore, you would next select the Duet mode for Duet platforms. For this example, we will keep the Duet mode set at the standard dual channel. Then proceed to set up the default SNR region for the selected EP type. For this click ABR example, we will set the region for the SNR calculation from 4 milliseconds to 9 milliseconds. If you wish to calculate an FSP FMP measure, select the averaging menu and activate block averaging, and select the number of sweeps per block of data. Next, select your FSP point. The FMP measure will be calculated over a region of 21 points with 10 points on either side of the midpoint. Note, the FMP FSP measures based on FSP point selection cannot be recalculated after acquisition. Now let's set up the control panel with acquisition parameters. Select or enter your testing intensity. Next, toggle to the test year you will be testing, and then select the mode of acquisition you can acquire just one ipsilateral recording by selecting IPSI. You can acquire a contralateral recording by selecting CONTRA. Or for two-channel systems, you can also select to acquire both IPSI and contralateral recording simultaneously by selecting both. Enter the number of sweeps you wish to acquire. You can always enter more than needed and stop your acquisition manually. Next. Enter the rate of stimulation. Remember, never enter a whole number in order to avoid synchronizing with noise contaminants. Enter the phase, rarefaction, condensation, or alternating. Note that if alternating is selected, you can use the split sweep feature in the software to split the recording into a rarefaction and condensation recording respectively. Enter the time acquisition window in 25 microseconds. You can right-click to increase by 25 microsecond and left-click to decrease by 25 microseconds. Next, open the Auditory Stimulus Generation menu from the Stim button on the control panel. For this example, we will select Click, but you can select a tone burst and enter a duration and frequency, or you can load a pre-programmed and pre-calibrated stimulus file. Choose the stimulus envelope for your stimulus. For the click, we will select rectangular. If you had selected a tone and required a rise and fall time, then you can select either the trapezoidal or extended cosines to enter the rise and fall time. Next, choose your output stimulator and transducer. If you would like the stimulus to be on continuously, select continuous for the stimulus presentation. If you would like the stimulus to turn on only when acquiring data, then select the stimulus presentation to be only while acquiring. Finally, select the output mode, in this case HL, and if masking is required, select either a specific SPL masking level or an offset tracking value. Click OK to register the changes selected in this menu. Next, click on Amplifier. Select Channel A, and set the Artifact Rejection Amplitude Level and Rejection Time Region. Then, choose your Gain, High Pass Filter, and Low Pass Filter settings. Set the Notch or Line Filter selection. For two-channel systems, Channel A is typically designated as the Right Hemisphere Channel. If you wish to comment or note the electrode montage used, enter it into the electrode montage fields. Next, select channel B. 
and again set the artifact rejection amplitude level and rejection time region. Then choose the gain, high pass filter, and low pass filter settings. Set the notch or line filter selection. For two channel systems, channel B is typically designated as the left hemisphere channel. Click OK to register these changes. Finally, set up the acquisition page display parameters from the set page menu. Set the scale, plot size, and start and end display timelines. To save these settings, Select Save Settings and enter in the file name. The settings file will now be available to load for testing anytime from the Load Settings button on your control panel. If you wish to save a settings file as your default so that it automatically loads up all the acquisition parameters and user preferences when you launch the SmartEP software, then resave the settings file as scpwin.set as this is the file that is called each time you launch the program. As of SmartEP version 5.51.00, we have added a page label and attributes file option for setting up pages 1 through 9 for report building. Note that the acquisition page attributes are only tied to settings files. Thus, the ACQ page will only change attributes when a settings file is loaded or when a report with different attributes is loaded. Let's set up a report pages file with page labels and attributes for a vestibular test battery. We will set up page one as an ECOG page, page two as an ABR page, page three as a CVAMP page, and page four as an OVAMP page. Let's begin with page one. Click on Label and set the sidebar 4-character page descriptor to ECOG and the printed page descriptor to ECOG. Next, set the scale for the page to say 1.5 microvolts. Plot size of 20% is pretty standard. Next, set the display plot end time for an ECOG to 5 milliseconds. Now right click on page 2, click on label, and set page description to CLK, and the printed page descriptor to click ABR. Next, set the scale for the page to 0.7 microvolts, plot size of 20%, and verify plot end time is 12.8 milliseconds. Now right click on page 3. Click on Label and set Page Description to CVMP and the printed page descriptor to CVMP. Next, set the scale for the page to 100 microvolts, plot size of 20%. Set the plot start time to minus 30 milliseconds. If you wish to see the entire baseline pre-stimulus region for the CVMP, then you may want to set this value to minus 85 or minus 100 milliseconds. Next, set the plot end time to 50 milliseconds. Now, right click on page 4. Click on Label, set the page description to OVMP, and the printed page descriptor to OVMP. Next, set the scale for the page to 10 microvolts, plot size of 20%. Set the plot start time to minus 30. Again, if you wish to see the entire baseline pre-stimulus region for the OVEMP, then you may want to set this value to minus 85 or minus 100 milliseconds. Next, set the plot end time to 50 milliseconds. Now, click on the Set Page menu and select Save Page Labels and Attributes and name the file. For this example, I will name it Vestibular Assessment. If you are performing the same test battery all the time with the same report needs, then you can save your page labels and attributes files as default, and every time you launch the SmartEP program, they will automatically load up. Otherwise, 
you can select from different page labels and attribute files as needed. For example, here is a pediatric threshold assessment report setup, or here is an FFR assessment report setup, and so on. If you need to restore the IHS factory defaults, simply load the SmartEP IHS page defaults. Thank you for watching this video. For more information on SmartEP, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and explore the wealth of information available from our videos.